I'm Obi Glenn. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, market stats just came out from the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board for November. And I, I, the disclaimer that I've been putting out here for 10 years on this video blog is you need to be extremely careful about statistics and markets, Vancouver real estate market statistics that you see in the mainstream media or in social media or posted on some of these chat boards or message boards. Uh, most of them are massaged, uh, embellished, just simply made up. And as I've told you guys for, for 10 years now, there is only one true source for Vancouver real estate market statistics, and that is from the source, the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board, which runs the MLS in Paragon. That's the source for all market statistics. And the nice thing is, is they put out a really beautiful full uh, statistics package uh, the first two or three days of every month for the previous month. And it's incredibly easy to understand and read. You can read it in about five minutes. At the top of that statistics package generally is the active sales to listings ratio, which I've told you guys is really pretty much the only stat that I gravitate towards when I'm looking at this every month. Because that's the only, it's by far the cleanest, easiest stat that gives you a quick snapshot of where the market is at. Because it takes both sales, what's been sold in the month, and, and uh, what's currently listed on the MLS to give you a ratio of whether we're in a balanced market, a seller's market, or a buyer's market. And, you know, as always here in the media, I continue to see people saying that the Vancouver real estate market is in the doldrums. There's a lot of trouble, a lot of crack showing. Uh, we're in a uh, buyer's market that continues to go lower, um, it, which simply is not true, as I'm going to point out here. You know, the condo market here has finally just slipped into just barely a high balance market here now teetering on still a low seller's market. The only market now that's in a low balance market is the detached market. So active sales to listing ratio is the cleanest stack going. The ratio, anything under 12 is a buyer's market. Between 12 and 20 is a balanced market. Over 20 is a seller's market. Right now for detached, that is the slowest market by far, which I've been telling you guys for a while. When interest rates have gone up 11 hikes here, it's always the most expensive market, the detached market that's gonna get the, hit the hardest. And we have dropped from 18 months ago from a pretty strong uh, seller's market all the way down to a low end and balance market. We're currently now the detached market at 12.7%. So again, anything under 12 is a buyer's market. So we are teetering on that right now for the detached market. I think 18 months ago, we were at 27 or 28. So that's a pretty precipitous drop in the detached market. But again, it's to be expected. I was telling my detached uh, sellers several years ago, maybe list, once the interest rate started going up, I said, try and get ahead of it because that'll be the market that'll be hit the hardest. Uh, we had a really nice spring market this er earlier in this spring, but now we slowed again here in the detached market. So we're at 12.7, 13, still balanced, but at a low, low end of balance. But that's it. After that, the townhouse market is at 19.8. Let's just call it 20 bordering on a seller to high balance market. Very little inventory. Good townhomes, I can tell you, because I've had a few and I've offered on a few. They're still getting into some multiple offers on the real high quality townhomes. The ones hugging up on a bridge or on a busy street, not as much. But we're almost still in a seller's market there. Uh, condos are at 18.2, so at a high, high end balance market, teetering on 18, uh, two months ago, we were still in a pretty good seller's market. I believe it was at 22 two months ago. So far from anything near a buyer's market. And I don't think townhomes or condos are going to get into a buyer's market. I hate to break it to people. After nine or 10 interest rate hikes, now we've probably got a tailwind to interest hikes coming into 2024. It would have happened by now. Uh, I guess anything can happen. Uh, inventory would have to really spike up and buyers would have to stay on the sidelines for us to dip back, uh, dip anything below 12, which would be a buyer's market. I, as you guys know, over the last 20 years, 
especially the good one bedroom condo market in downtown Vancouver has almost never been in a buyer's market. There's been the odd little window, three months here, six months there over the last 20 years, but it's pretty rare. Occasionally we'll get into a, a balanced market or a lower end balanced market, but I would say 70% of the time for good quality one bedrooms in downtown Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, Kits, we're in a seller's market for those. And we're teetering on that right now. And if you guys saw my blog I did a couple weeks ago, I think spring 2024, market's gonna pick up. Uh, we've kind of had a, a balloon underwater scenario here. Demand has been, has been uh, kind of held down. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised for, if we're sure we slip up a couple of points there and get into the low end seller's market on condos and townhomes. So a little different than what you hear in the media a lot of the times. They'll tell you, you know, all the doom and gloom and, every, and the market's terrible. Well, we're, we're in a high end balanced to seller's market here still, guys, on condos and townhomes. And I think that's going to probably improve. Well, it definitely will once the Bank of Canada finally comes out and says we pause interest rates. And then perhaps later this spring, if they start to cut a few uh, 25 point basis point hikes or, or uh, cuts, watch out. This market will definitely slip back into a seller's market, which is what it is most of the time. Final couple of things here. Uh, I've talked about this before. I've had a pretty busy fall here. I'm always representing lots of investor buyers. I see I've gotten some very good buys for some of my buyers, not just investor buyers, but young first time buyers, uh, especially in the downtown Vancouver market, Mount Pleasant. I've talked about buying some good, high quality, older strata in the West End that I've been picking up. I've got a number of buildings that I keep a really close watch list on. As soon as something hits, I'm, tr I'm always trying to put an offer in on it and try and buy it. I've got one building. I have the street running on it now coming up to three years. I bought every one bedroom that's been listed in here. One day that streak's gonna end because in some cases, uh, a lot of times it's tenanted, so I have to get a principal residence buyer, which aren't as abundant as my investor database. But some really good buys in, that, in the, some good quality, older concrete strata in the West End that we've been buying for $1,000 a square foot, $1,050, $1,100 if it's been rent out a square foot. And when you consider, as I've talked about many times, you know, the price to bring on and the cost of what pre-sale in downtown Vancouver is coming online at, $1,800, $1,900, $2,000, $2,500 a square foot. These, these at 1,000 a square foot are gonna be looking pretty good. But the kicker is that I've also been talking about is the location of these homes in the West End. The West End is really is where I live and it is really the only true residential neighborhood in Vancouver. Yale Town is great. Coal Harbor is a fantastic neighborhood. But the West End is the only true residential neighborhood. It's beautiful, quiet, tree-lined streets. Um, now, the thing with the West End, of course, though, is, is there's not a lot of new supply there. It's a lot of co-ops, it's a lot of leasehold land, and it's a lot of dilapidated rental condos or rental apartments. So there's not a whole lot for sale of uh, what, as far as high quality concrete condo, but they are there. And when they do hit, uh, they usually sell pretty quickly. But the locations on these just cannot be beat. So a lot of these ones, one of the couple of buildings I've got on the West End have got, depending on the floor and the, and the uh, outlook, have got beautiful water views. A lot of times southwest facing uh, into English Bay, which is the absolute best of the best because you get the afternoon sunsets, that warm sun that comes into the unit in the afternoons. In the summertime, it doesn't get dark in there until 10 o'clock at night or later. But, you know, I was talking to a friend about, you know, a lot of the newer luxury condos have been coming online and some of them are great. The buildings themselves are fantastic, but not the greatest locations in a lot of cases. Hugging up on bridges, hugging up on off ramps or on ramps of bridges. And, you know, it's simple, you know, all the best real estate was developed 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And what we're left with now, and in some cases, not all, you know, is what I call remnant lots. And I've talked, gone back and forth on my comment section here with a few people on this and Twitter. 
You know, remnant lots is just like, uh, you know, a carpet co uh, company. You know, they, they se sell 10,000 square feet of carpet to a buyer uh, and after they cut it all up, they have some larger, what they call remnant pieces that you can kind of cut up and make into doormats or maybe f carpet a small bedroom or, or a laundry room or something like that or, a, you know, a small den. Uh, that's the same thing in Vancouver. I mean, there was a lot of these remnant lots that developers were sitting on for many, many years. And I think they probably thought, hey, eventually we'll build something on this. But <laughs> I don't think they ever dreamed we'd be building a luxury condo at $3,000 a square foot. I think they probably thought we'll sell this to the city. We'll build social housing on here, maybe a rental building. Um, who, who knows? But, you know, they're remnant lots. They're not the greatest of locations. But that's why, you know, I think you got to zig when people are zagging and have a look. There's good value in some of these older strata. But of course, you need a realtor like me. Uh, it's a minefield in the West End. There's some great buildings that are well taken care of, well managed strata sitting on incredibly valuable pieces of real estate. And then there's other strata that are a mess. They've been deferring all kinds of work. You're going to buy the thing and then get hit with a fifty or $60,000 levy in a few years. Those ones you got to be careful with. But it is kind of funny how, uh, you know, some of the best real estate in the city, and now we're going about this with the building, uh, with uh, the city uh, going forward with new rental buildings, where just in my neighborhood here, they've just torn down two old dilapidated rental apartments and they're going to build two 40 story luxury uh, high rises, but they're, they were going to be strata. Now they're going to be rental market rental. So small one bed is going to start at $3,000, $300 uh, a month. But it is kind of odd that, you know, in my opinion, the, they would have been better off selling that piece of property to a developer who could then build a luxury high rise on a prime piece of property. And for the money they get from the developer, they could buy twice as much land hugging up on a bridge or in a less desirable area. But it's just the way it is, I guess, but it does seem strange. But final thing is there not only in the West End, but there's also good value in older condo that have been renovated that I've been talking about. Because right now I don't think uh, the renovation costs, if you're buying a condo today and looking to renovate it, as you guys know, the cost to renovate a, a typical one bedroom unit has skyrocketed the last three years. You know, a rental that might have cost you $40,000, a basic rental four years ago, is probably costing you $65,000 today, and that would be a very basic rental. But I see value in condos that have been renovated maybe two, three, four years ago that are not pad, aren't reflective of the current cost to renovate that unit today. So that's another good area that you want to keep an eye on. Um, good older condo in prime neighborhoods like the West End and then maybe some good quality units that were renovated three, four or five years ago because I don't think those renovation costs have been padded in yet to our current market. As To finish up, market, don't let anyone tell you the market's in the doldrums. It's holding up. We're not anywhere near a buyer's market, folks, in any category, and especially not condos and townhomes. We're actually teetering on still a seller's market, believe it or not. Now, we'll see what happens in December and January, but again, I think as we move into spring 2024, I think that sales to active listing ratio is gonna, is gonna go up a little bit and probably go into the low end of a seller's market once more. I'm Owen Big Line. As always, thanks for watching. See you next week.